Okay, what are your expectations of the Citroen C3 on the basis of this? Sounds ridiculous? But that's exactly the situation we were in not too long ago because this top secret project from Citroen, this made for India, made in India sub for meter offering was so tightly under wraps that a first sneak peek of it was via leaked pictures of its scale model. Was it because the French were not sure about getting things right for the tough Indian market? Well, we've had the C3 with us for less than half a day right now. And in this time, we found that, sure, it could do some things better. But on the whole, if I had worked on the C3, and if I was an engineer, I'd be damn proud of myself. Because this has wowed. Now, Citroen kept us guessing on a lot of fronts, like what kind of a vehicle they would be offering in the sub 4 meter category. Now, usually when they make an SUV, they call it an air cross, but the C3 is just that, a C3. But if you look at it right here, right now, doesn't it look chunky? And it has those ruggedish elements, like the skid plates up front and the body cladding down the side. Be it the Brezza, the Magnite, the Venue or the Sonnet, like them, this is just under 4 meters long. In terms of height, it's more than the Nissan Magnite and just a bit lesser than the Hyundai Venue. In terms of wheelbase, it's more than anything else out in the market today. And in terms of ground clearance, it's 180 millimeters, which is more than the hatchbacks, but 10 millimeters shy of really cracking the sub 4 meter SUV space. But it just so happens that Citroen are calling this a premium hatchback with an SUV twist to it. So we get a really clear insight of who Citroen is from this. Clearly, straight talkers. Well, definitely the design is distinctive and not polarizing, which in my books is great. But this isn't why I'm wowed by the C3. The wow factor though increases as you start interacting with the C3. For instance, Not light and flimsy. You look at the finish, the shut lines, it's all very consistent. And when you get inside, you'll realize that the air of substance just grows. Look at the fabrics on offer here. They look handsome. There's that contrast stitching. It all feels purposeful, but appealing. And that's the same even here for the plastics on offer. And that's even when you look at the plastic that's on use inside the door pocket. Impressive? Heck yeah. Now, it sounds like a bit of marketing faff, but Citroen say that the C3 has a theater style seating, but it actually has a hip point, which is 27 millimeters higher than the front seats. And sitting here, you do get much better vision out of the cabin. In terms of the cushioning on offer, it's really nice and supportive. Now, this seat is set to my driving position and look at the amount of knee room on offer. But if you were a six footer driving up front, you could still have a six footer in the back, comfortably. And as for three abreast, well, if you were doing a city jaunt with average size adults, I don't think they would complain. But this isn't what's impressing me alone. There's the thoughtfulness in the details. You have two USB charging points here in the back, and it's the way that the design is for the phone holder that's really clever because it allows you to route your cable underneath without pushing the phone up or bending the cables too much. And there are other such details even up in the front around the center console. There are built-in cable guides up front and lots of storage in the center console too. The door pockets aren't XL, but sufficient. Two requests. For now, just ignore what the C3 misses out on and please excuse the fact that I'm gonna be geeking out a bit. There's lots of space, even for taller occupants. The view out of the cabin is great. The seat is positioned higher than it would be in a hatchback. So it does feel commanding in that sense. And then there is that sense of substance that we were talking about. Be it in terms of this shimmery colored finish here on the dashboard or this chrome finish around the air vents, which all feels just well done. There's this sense of quality here too in the way the aircon vents move. They feel well built. And then there are the special touches. 
like the aircon system, which is said to be designed specifically for Indian conditions. I was told that it has been designed to cool the entire cabin at just the blower speed of two. It wouldn't have to go higher than that. And on this very sultry morning here in Goa, I've had it at one. And then there's the infotainment system. This 10-inch display feels bright, it's responsive, it has wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, which all is great. But what impresses me is the sound system. It's enjoyable. So, the cabin experience certainly does wow. But the thing that blew me away The introduction for most of us Indians to Citroen was through the C5 Air Cross, which promised something different, which was advanced comfort. But as it turned out, the C5 is the comfort factor with its seat suspension and India readiness. Now, when you go from a 40 lakh vehicle to something under 10 lakh rupees, you'd expect the experience to get diluted, that'd be fair. However, it's a bit different because the C3 is actually pretty impressive. If you want to experience what being rattled in a C3 feels like, uh, you're gonna need commitment and time. That's because the C3 soaks up rough roads, potholes and broken patches in a manner that would make a multiple-time WRC winning company proud. Bumps disappear. There was one here, but the C3 suspension doesn't get hassled by it. There's no bobbing or bouncing. The tall sidewalls for the tires give it added cushioning and over broken roads the C3 just glides. And this surprise definitely wowed. Well, that's wow, right? Well, there's more. That rally pedigree is active in more ways than just soaking up the bumps. You wanna hustle? You can. The 195 section tires are sticky and confidence inspiring, but a lot of the magic is baked into the chassis and suspension. Now, Citroen is saying that the C3 is meant to be fun to drive and that we've experienced, but along with that, this small size steering wheel with the flat bottom design feels sporty, but it also does well to instill a sense of confidence because at higher speeds when you hustle it, it weighs up nicely to give you a little bit of a sense of restraint to keep things tiny as well. Now, Citroen has also kept us guessing about what's going to be powering the C3. And as it turns out, you have options by way of petrol engines. Both of them are 1.2 litre engines, one is naturally aspirated and the other is turbocharged. Now, usually in a conversation like this, the focus would be on the turbo petrol. But in this case, I'm happy to tell you, the naturally aspirated has definitely got my attention. First and foremost, this three-cylinder engine feels smooth. You do not feel that thrum from the engine. And second, it doesn't sound noisy either. The gear shifts on this five-speed gearbox are smooth, the clutch is light, which means everyday commuting duties are pretty stress-free. If you want to cruise out on the highway, this will get up to speeds and cruise easily. But it's when you want to make an overtake or really, you know, pick up the pace, that's when you will have to work the gearbox because it's not packed with torque. Actually, there is a lot of torque, but the tall gearing makes it feel more laid back and helps deliver a claimed fuel efficiency figure of 19.8 kilometers per liter. So, this promises to be a solid all-rounder. However, if you want more... That brings us to the turbo. Now, obviously, this one is packing a lot more punch, 110 PS, more torque, and it is definitely quicker, peppier. So, if you're traveling at higher speeds regularly, you will feel the need for this engine over the naturally aspirated, and it will feel more satisfying because of that. 
This turbocharged engine isn't sluggish at low speeds. The torque pours out thick and fast. However, there is a catch and that's the clutch pedal. It's a bit heavier which means in stop-go traffic, you will have to be a bit more careful. You will have to get used to it. Actually, let me shorten this. What this engine needs is an automatic transmission which is not going to be an offer when the C3 goes on sale at first but is expected later. But for me, this is going to be a big mess. And that brings us to what's missing on this supposedly premium hatch. For starters, at 315 litres, the boot space is small for a Magnite or Brezza rival. Sure, this isn't a deal breaker, but then there are other misses. Many misses. Like a sunroof, forget panoramic. There are no ventilated seats, there's no wireless charging, there's no automatic air conditioning either. There's no 360 degree camera and a reversing camera is offered only as an accessory. Then if you look at the details, you realize there's a lot more that's missing. There's no central unlock switch. There are no powered ORVMs. There's also no day-night IRVM. There's no rear defogger or wiper or cool glove box. And the list gets longer. And if you look at the basics, there's no armrest here for the driver, there's no armrest at the rear, the power window switches for the rear seats are not on the door pads. The release for the hood is very, very basic. And well, while this does have ABS and dual airbags, the headrests are non-adjustable. However, the cabin experience, while it may have cut out on features, never feels like it's cut corners. And the best example for that is the headrest. It is cushioned and designed such that it is supportive. Because of the rain, the continuity of our story has gone for a toss, but I'm going to continue in the same way. Starting with the tail lamps, which do not get any LED elements, but they look handsome. The door handles are flat type, but they feel solid. And then you have the wheels, which are steel wheels with quite handsome designs for the covers. But if you wanted alloy wheels, you could get them as accessories. And this is where things get a bit interesting because Citroen are offering accessories which can be installed at the dealership level to customize your C3 the way you want, 70 of them, or you could choose from five packs to get the look right. Now, you could also configure this car online on their platform and have the car delivered to your home, to your doorstep, and you could do the same for your service at no extra cost. But that's only a promise, a big, critical promise. And this is especially important because Citroen will have all of 20 dealerships when the C3 goes on sale. So Citroen is doing things differently and they are unlocking value, at least trying to unlock value, which is where my sense of disappointment with the kind of features on offer and where this is likely to be positioned is turning to cautious optimism. Because if the business people have done their homework and done their work as well as the engineers and designers of the C3, I would think this would be priced spot on, which, if I have to take a guess, would be in the 5.5 to 7.5 lakh rupee range. But we'll only know for sure when it launches on the 20th of July. Until then, you can put your thinking caps on and let us know in the comments what you think would be the good price, or actually a fantastic price, for this Citroen C3.